Welcome to a new episode of this beautiful podcast. I'm your host, Mary Miranda. Today, I want to dive into a topic that is here to empower you, inspire you, and celebrate your strength. I want to talk about embracing being single with confidence, empowerment, and a sprinkle of feminism. And this is so dear to my heart because I have been on this journey, especially this year, but in the past, I have been desiring to truly enjoy and embrace being single. And it just hasn't really happened for many reasons. I was healing, I was heartbroken, or I was truly not seeing the opportunity and how wonderful of a time it is to choose to be single in a world that tells you that you need to go and date people just so you are not single and devalued in that sense. But let's talk about the first thing that I want to say is that being single is in a waiting room. It is an empowering journey of self-discovery and growth. Choosing to be single, it's all about choosing your own path free from societal expectations and going against the grain as a woman, which is so important to to kind of emphasize. We're going to discuss how a little bit of the feminist perspective that embraces and celebrates women having a choice and embraces women choosing to be single as a valid and empowering choice. Um, And it's all about rewiring the narrative and creating a space where women are defined on their own, by their own terms and not by their relationship status. So women, we are worthy and enough we as we are like attaching a man or a relationship status to us does not define our worth and value we are innately worthy and value and I feel it's something that a lot of people don't realize and a lot of people see us as more devalued or not worthy or not enough because a lot of us are single especially if you are in your close to your 40s or in your in your mid 30s or um, in your late 40s it doesn't matter Every time you meet a woman who says, I'm single, I'm not married, I don't have children, it's like automatically people just just like assign a value to her. Like she's not valuable. Maybe she couldn't get a man or whatever. But it's in fact, it's so powerful to know that now we have a choice. We choose to be single. We choose to be child-free. We have a choice to define our own path and not to confirm with societal standards and expectations and everybody and what everybody thinks we should be. Because let's face it, society often bombard us with expectations and pressures, especially when it comes to relationship. You have to get married at a certain time. You have to have children. And a lot of times that's not the plan for a lot of us. That's not what we desire for our lives. And being single is not a problem to fix or an issue that defines your worth and value. Like I've said before, being single is an act of liberation, proclamation, and empowerment. You are defining defining the odds of what society expects you to be or by a certain age or do with your life. We are expected to marry, to have and raise children, to be housewives, to tend to us, our husbands, to live in a white, to live in a white picket fence house, maybe work, maybe you are expected to come home from work, to cook for your kids, to take care of your kids, help them do the homework, do the house chores, nighttime routine, repeat everything all over again. But what happens with you? What happens with you? Are you taking care of yourself? There is barely any time, especially if you married someone who is more like on the incompetent side, that it's not helping you, that it's not helping you raise the children he helped you procreate, and he just expects you to do everything. No. So let's be grateful for all of us who are choosing to be single. And if you don't have children, because this is a powerful time, but if you do have children, even so, just the fact that you don't have to deal with that, it's so... It's so important to emphasize too. The patriarchy has conditioned us to believe that women are seen as more valuable if they marry young, carry ch- children, and tend to their house households. And we are not in the 1920s anymore or the 1950s. We now get to decide what singlehood means for us. 
without the weight of the patriarchy and societal expectations. I know so many red pill podcasting bros are always on TikTok commenting or other social media platforms trying to devalue women who are in their, even their late 20s, 30s, and 40s at any age they keep saying comments or putting comments or degrading women saying that your value goes down after 30. Nobody's going to want you. You're going to die alone. You will die single and alone with cats. You go, you're going to go and live alone and be miserable or you are selfish or you're this and you're that. And it's just like so sad. And it makes me so upset because I'm like, first of all, I am not a pet person. So I'm never going to be with pets and cats and dogs or anything like that and I'm if I die alone I'm probably gonna die happy because I am taking care of myself but it's so much better to be single for me than to be in a relationship where I'm I'm not happy where I'm miserable where I lost myself that's happened before and your worth and value does not go down after 30 in fact your bs meter goes up and you're full of wisdom of experiences and you don't settle for anything that you don't desire because you know exactly what you desire after so many experiences. So we have enough experience, wisdom to know what we want, what we don't want, the red flags, the deal breakers, the non-negotiables. We won't settle for less than what we deserve. You know, it's like when you acquire so much wisdom from dating in your 20s, in your 30s, then you know better that it's so much better and peaceful to be single and to enjoy your life than to be in a relationship where you are not happy. And if I can give any piece of advice for any woman who is struggling, accepting and embracing this phase of their lives, either you are actively choosing to be single because you're focusing on areas of your life or maybe maybe you recently broke up with someone and you are just trying to heal is that you need to enjoy your freedom your independence and your life right now that you are single and create a life that you're madly in love with and obsessed with and create memories and experiences experiences for yourself too, so you can one day look back and see how much you enjoy your life. And one of the questions that can help you shift your mindset, I do have a lot of questions that you can do a lot of inner work throughout this podcast episode. So I hope that if you are driving, listening to this, when you get the time, you can sit down with a journal and journal a lot of the, the inner work questions that I am going to share with you. But if you're struggling with accepting or finding joy and embracing being single right now, this can help you shift your mindset. If you were on your deathbed and you know you were about to die pretty much and you were shown a documentary or a movie of your life and if you looked back, would you be happy with how you lived your life? How you led yourself throughout your life? what legacy you left in this world, how people will remember you, how you are remembering that you lived your life, how you enjoy your life, or would you be filled with shame, regret, wishing you hadn't spent all those years on dating apps, getting hurt in situation chips, instead of building your dreams, your goals, your career, your finances, and creating memories with friends while you, that you desired. Um, or were you fee or is this going to be one of those things that you're gonna look back and regret that you settled? Or you're gonna be happy that you stayed single and you didn't settle for that person and you enjoy your life and you, you waited until the correct person came along? Would you regret how you treated yourself? Would you regret spending all those years in in debt and situationships and not the relation and not creating a relationship with yourself? Would you regret not loving yourself? Would you regret not embracing those periods where you were single and took advantage to live your life to the maximum? And you can ask yourself, you can continue to ask yourself more around this. So you can actually see, like, oh my gosh, like I'm looking at a picture, a movie of my life. And I'm about to die and I didn't enjoy my life or I regret I should have enjoyed being single. I should have embraced that time and, and get, go into a new career, start a business. Why didn't I do this? You know, and it's one of those things that you're like, oh, my God, if today was my last day on earth, would I regret anything? 
And it's kind of one of those questions that like really makes you like wake up and be like, oh my gosh, like I am not taking advantage of this time. And I, I really want you to like ask yourself, like, how would you feel if today was your last day or if you were in your deathbed and you looked at your life, like, would you be happy with the relationship you created with yourself, with how you treated yourself, how you, if you loved yourself or not, or would you regret spending all those years in those dead end relationships and happy relationships where you should, you settled and you wish you hadn't settled you wish you would have listened to your intuition it's kind of those things that you're like oh my gosh like I need to change something because I don't want my life to end this way like I am meant for more I want to leave a legacy I want to enjoy my life my freedom my independence create something for myself and my life and my future and and then just really sit with yourself sit with yourself and how this makes you feel and if you are still struggling, obviously, with embracing being single, there's also probably some mindset and inner work that you can work around, like what beliefs come up when you think about being single? What beliefs come up when people ask you why you are single? Like, is it like a source of shame? Like what comes up in your body? How does it feel? Where in your body? Um, what thoughts are coming up? What belief systems um, what stories are you telling yourself about being single? What meaning are you giving to being single? What does it mean for you? What emotions do you feel in your body when you think about being single? And what new meaning do you desire to give to being single that feels very empowering and makes you see it as a gift, as something that you need to embrace and not as a problem or something to fix or something that is wrong with you? And I think the main reason why I wanted to do this episode is because I am about to be 40 and I am on a journey that I'm choosing to be single. I've been single for about nine months now and I'm also child free. I don't desire to have any children and I'm a very happy auntie. Like that is like one of my favorite things in this world that I'm an auntie to amazing little nuggets. And I am truly enjoying this phase of my life and embracing it. And it has never hit me this way before, because before I used to kind of always be healing from someone. I was on dating apps for since 2015, on and off dating apps. Before that, obviously, I was never on dating apps. It was, um, I started with Match and then obviously Bumble and Hinge, and they have never really felt good for me. They always came very like with a lot of anxiety because I do have an anxious attachment that I'm actively healing, obviously. But in the past, I realized that I wasn't fully enjoying being single, the periods of times that I was single, or even when I was dating, that I was just meeting guys, I was still single because I was not really in relationships, but I was always like struggling in the dating scene and not truly embracing and enjoying the dates. And I wasn't doing many things to bring my life joy. I wasn't, I was um, putting all my time, effort, and energy into healing, into working on my business and my full time job at the same time. And there were periods that I was so drained, I was so burnt out, and I was exhausted from it all. And this year has been the year that I have been healing all the burnout. Last year, I was sexually harassed at my job place of employment. So that took a lot of me to heal, not feeling safe around men, not feeling safe in my body, men seeing my body. And it has been quite the healing journey. That's also another reason why I just want to be single right now, because I'm really I am not about to go back on dating apps. I'm just embracing this. I'm decentering dating. I'm focused on other areas of my life. And I'm really happy. And there's obviously some days that I do feel a little sad, but it has nothing to do with a man or dating or finding love. It has to do with mental health things that I have, or it has to do with a living situation, or it has to do with things that have nothing to do with men in the romantic spectrum per se and and before obviously like now that I'm here and I'm like oh my gosh I'm actually embracing and loving and feeling joyful being single on my own and having a good relationship with who I am I love who I am 
And if there's parts of me that I'm still working to improve, that I'm focused on that, I'm focused on other things. But before I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't happy. I, even when I was single, that I thought I was happy, I wasn't really creating joyful experiences. I wasn't taking myself out on dates like I used to. I used to do that so much and I kind of stopped and I kind of went into this very hermit mode when the whole sexual harassment happened. And, and then at the, at the, around that time, my ex and I broke up. I was dating someone last year. So everything came together. And then I lost the apartment where I was living. I went to Texas. Things didn't work out there. And everything was just so chaotic. And just barely this year is when things started feeling and coming into place for me when I started like working on other areas of my life and things feel very fulfilled in so many areas of my life. And um, and before I realized, I was like, oh my God, like I said, I wasn't taking myself out on dates. Like I used to, I wasn't doing fun things on my own. I wasn't seeing a lot of friends. I wasn't creating experiences for myself. I wasn't seeing a lot of my family, like my brother and my nieces and my nephews. And, and when I did, I felt so guilty of spending time with them because I should have been spending time on my business. I should have been doing this. I should have been doing that. And it was just a lot. And this kind of, this kind of year, I decided to take a step back and really embrace where I'm at. And now that I'm close to 40, it hits different because I'm like, how did I get here? How am I almost 40? And I wasted my 20s in the major part, part of my 30s dating situationships, situationships being heartbroken in the wrong career getting married and separating and going through that ordeal all on my own during COVID. And I divorced through Zoom and having to deal with all the logistics with everything that was the most stressful period of my life, 2021. That's when I finally divorced. But it has just been a lot. And that year, that's when I got this job. And that's when the sexual harassment happened. And it's just, it was a lot that finally, like I said, this year, everything has felt like easier. The living situation is still something that it's a work in progress, but I am so much happier and just truly just having that mindset shift that I'm like, I am finally happy being single. Like I am proud of it. I am proud that I'm choosing myself. I'm choosing to be single and I have softened kind of like letting go of so much control that I start. I have to do this. I have to do that. Everything's so planned kind of leaning back into creating amazing experiences and enjoying this single status and just focusing, like I said, on my business, on this, this podcast. I do have a full-time job, so I still have to take, that takes a lot of 40 hours of my time per week. And it's just kind of like, okay, we're going to take this one step at a time. We're not going to try to rush everything because we don't want to get burnt out anymore. But I kind of want to make to make this episode because I'm finally at this place that I'm like, how did I not ever enjoy, fully enjoy and embrace being single? It was always kind of this longing that I wanted someone, that I wanted to be with someone. And I should have ex I should have put more time and effort into my career, into my finances and other areas of my life that are more important than just having someone. But let's move on to how can we embrace being single and reclaim our independence? The power of reclaiming your independence, being single provides a unique opportunity to focus on yourself, to reconnect with yourself, and to enter a committed relationship with yourself. This time can be used as a catalyst for personal growth, self-love, goals, dreams, and the discovery of your own strength, how you want to live your life, and what you desire for each area of your life. It is a time for clarity and vision, which is so important. And that's what I'm so excited about this season. And what goals you have, this is where you can start asking yourself, like to get clarity and vision for your life. What goals do you have? What dreams do you have? What is your vision for your life? What kind of life do you desire for yourself? What are your terms and conditions for your own life? And if you are like, okay, well, like now I'm single, but I also want to work in other areas of my life. You can literally Google wheel of life, and that's going to show you the major areas of your life. And you can sort of like 
rate from one to 10, how fulfilled you are with each area of your life or which areas you need to work on and what areas you need to put more time and effort into. That's something that really helped me because I start, I started the year rating my wheel of life and this year I'm ending it. I'm doing it um, like next week of how much progress I have made in each area of my life. And I already know it's very significant. So I'm so excited. So that's something that you can do like every three months, every six months, whenever you feel like it, or at the end of the year, and you can do it again at the end of next year or in six months to see the progress that you have made for each area of your life. And take advantage, like I said, um, I wasted my 20s, like I said, and the major part of my 30s in being heartbroken pretty much and healing from men and this is also when my spiritual awakening happened in my early 30s at the end in like around my Saturn return early 30s is when I kind of woke up and started realizing so much stuff how my childhood connects with who I am and programming conditioning trauma inner child healing childhood trauma and so much more and it's when I truly started waking up but just realizing that I wish I could go back in time to truly focus in my career, maybe could have gotten a master's degree, a PhD or something in biology, chemistry to work in a lab, or I know I didn't want to go to medical school. Uh, that's something that I did know. I do have a science background and I also have a very strong IT background, but I'm like, I should have done something more with my life. I'm here at 40. And I am where I'm supposed to be somehow, but it's not where I had envisioned. And those feelings of regret, I should have done this, I should have in the guilt, like you can do EFT, emotional freedom technique to help you shift those. Or if you need help, you can DM me. I do have coaching available for this type of healing because I've done it for myself. I've done it for other people. And just to shift those emotions, because there could be a lot of shame, a lot of regret, a lot of guilt, like I should have done so much more with my life and I know now I have all this experience that I have gone through and I help women which is so fulfilling it makes me so happy because I always wanted to help people and I just didn't know in what what sense or what context that would happen I always thought I would be a doctor but I feel like if I, I wanted to be a doctor more so, so my parents could be proud of me, it was more like an ego type of decision, just so my parents could show me off and to make them proud. But it wasn't truly something that I wanted, because now I know that I would not be able to comply with all the regulations and the way they are, because I'm also like very holistic and other things. But that's something that I'm like now, okay, I'm, you're helping people in a different context and you're helping women, which is like so amazing to even know. But I do wish that I hadn't sent her men and dating all my life. And I wish I would have started this healing journey in my teens. I wish I would have had someone like me to teach me when I was younger. So I would have, I would have made better decisions, but I didn't. And I have to heal the regret. And I had to grieve what I didn't have, what I wish I would have had and done. I had to grieve that. And it's just a beautiful journey. But you now have the freedom and the time right now to live your life on your terms and pave your own path. If you're not happy with where you are in your life right now, utilize all this time that you have to refocus and to shift your life. But a lot of times people who are choosing to be single, they either are healing from something or they're truly enjoying their lives and choosing to be single because they're just working on other, other areas of your life. But you do, if you do need help with healing, just send me a DM. Everything is in the show notes how you can contact me. Now, let's talk about embracing your own company and dating yourself. This is kind of like self-love. Um, learning to be with yourself can be very foreign um, or a foreign concept to so many people because we are so used to being around others in relationships with families and friends. Often the thought of being alone with ourselves is scary and uncomfortable for so many people. This is why so many people use coping mechanisms of distraction to avoid being alone with themselves because of the thoughts and sensations from the feelings that happened when we are in silence and feeling everything. 
Um, and some of the coping, coping mechanisms that people use is either dating apps or serial dating, always being in relationships, jumping from relationship to relationship, constantly wanting to be around friends and people, constantly wanting and needing to be doing something, being busy, either cleaning the house or working, 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 um, social media scrolling, which is something that I have a huge problem with. <laughs> And going out, drinking, and partying, and I it could be also drugs and those habits that that soothe and numb you, so you don't feel anything. And there's obviously other methods of distraction. Gaming can be one of them too. But anything that distracts you from being with yourself and feeling your feelings and doing the inner work can be a coping mechanism. And there's times that you're like, you know what? I am having a hard day. I just want to go out and forget about today. But I know I'm conscious and mindful that I am not running away. I just want to have an easy day. And then tomorrow I'll revisit what I'm feeling. I'll do the inner work. That's completely fine. But when you bypass and you just want to distract yourself from, so you don't do the inner work and heal and feel your feelings because you don't want to be with yourself, that's when it's an issue. Once you learn to get to know yourself what you like, what you are all about, your emotions, your feelings, um, how it feels in your body, reconnecting with your body, facing the fear. It comes with listening to your thoughts and your feelings. And just like the feeling your feelings, you will see how what an incredible person you are to be around with because you are going to learn to love your own comp company and be with you, which is so important because a lot of people don't like to be with themselves because of the thoughts because of the the chatter that goes in your in your brain the in in your mind the inner mean girl the inner critic or those voices that you just I don't want to do it but when you sit with them and you give them a voice and you say okay I'm here I'm listening what do you need to tell me or what are you feeling there's times that I'm just like, you know, I'm so busy because I do have a job and then I have a podcast. Sometimes I have coaching sessions. Sometimes I have to do podcast interviews. I'm always on the go. And then I wake up super early and go to bed super early. And a lot of times, like I just, I'm, I'm like, you know, I do have anxiety and ADHD and some days I don't take the time like throughout the day because every Every morning I meditate and I journal and I do my inner work. But sometimes throughout the day, I just need to sit in silence and ask myself, how are you? How are you today? And then I'm just like, I'm okay. And I'm like, no, but how are you really doing? And that's when everything starts happening. And there's times that I just start crying because I'm like, I wish somebody asked me that. And I'm like, I'm asking yourself now. I'm asking you, how are you? And that's so healing because a lot of times you're like, I'm not okay. I'm not handling things okay today. It's too much. I don't think I can do it. And that's when you sort of coach yourself and you give yourself a pep talk that you're doing great, that you're doing okay. And this is another thing that you cherish yourself because you listen to yourself. You will be there for you. You will not abandon yourself and you will choose to be with you and be there for you no matter what. This is how you healed also those wounds of abandonment, of not being chosen, of being rejected by the way you show up with yourself, for yourself when you are down, and by showing up for yourself the way you desire someone else did for you. This is also reparenting or maybe an ex-boyfriend or an ex-lover who didn't show up for you the way you had desire or friends. This is also reparenting your inner child and your adult self at the same time. So it's very healing. And when you enter a relationship with yourself, you're going to start doing things for you to fulfill those unmet needs, which is very important. And this is a huge part of healing that you need to go back to, to your childhood and ask yourself at this time, okay, what do I need? What needs were not met when I was a child that I can meet for myself today and that's another way that you can also fulfill your unmet needs and kind of come to this place of feeling more whole and complete and healed and soothe your inner child and start creating experiences and things that really make you make you happy and like I said embracing your own company is the biggest gift because when you enter a relationship with yourself 
and start doing things for you to make you happy, to bring joy into your life, it just feels so fulfilling and it just feels, you feel whole and complete when you start doing things for you, when you embrace your own company, when you are there for you, when you have your own back. And on the hard dates, you also have to be there for you. Like I said, you are your own support system. You are your own family. You need to soothe your inner child. And when you start healing those parts is just so it's just healing at the soul level that I don't even have words to explain and I also started doing this thing because I used to not be okay with being alone even though I like being alone but solitude I always had the tv on the background with friends running even if it was on mute just knowing that the tv was in the background made me feel I was connected to someone and that I was not alone, even though I was alone in my room the whole time. And, and I caught myself doing that sometimes like that I have friends on the background and I, I rerun it. I finish all the seasons and it start back up on season one, episode one, and it's in the background. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I am still doing that. I need something in the background. So I don't feel alone. And I feel a little bit of connection to someone because I'm like busy and I don't have the time or whatever reason. So I started turning the TV off and soothing my nervous system and started loving my solitude, my alone time, my independence, seeing it from a more empowering angle. And I started just loving me time and just doing things alone, like working here right now, doing this podcast or whatever project I'm on, I don't need the TV on anymore. I don't need anything on the background. I just put my headphones, my AirPods, or my earplugs, and I'm just zone in. And it's just been very healing for my nervous system too, to take this time to truly enjoy my solitude without background distractions to soothe my nervous system, because now I can co-regulate and self-regulate in different ways. And I don't even know where I was going with that, but I just felt it was very important to, to say, but I, you know, it just comes to the place that you got to love to be with yourself. You got to love connecting with yourself and embrace your own company and create a deeply committed relationship with yourself. And you can ask yourself, what things do I like to do? How can I make alone time a sacred experience for me, my me time? Do I want to read a book and have like a candle, light a candle and dim the lights? Do I want to cook myself a special meal? What do I want to do for myself that is going to make me so happy and smile and create this experience that I can think about like next, like in the future and look back and be like, I am so proud of myself. I am so glad I did that. My soul needed that. My inner child needed that. Um, and dating yourself. This is another thing that I just love doing. And the way that I do date yourself, I don't just take myself out to dinner. And like I said, there was a period of time this year that I stopped doing that. I start, I stopped creating those experiences because I was so caught up in my, in being busy and not having time and trying to control everything. And I just had to ask myself, okay, in a jar, I put a bunch of, um, ideas of dates. And I also have like, a like, um, like, um, in my notes, I have a list of things that I want to do. Um, I have like a bucket list. There we go. That's what I was looking for a bucket list and unmet needs. And it's my, it's my way to do it. So like I go and say, okay, what do I wish I had done as a child? Or what do I wish my parents would have done for me? Or what do I wish an ex would have done for me? And I put it in the jar or things that I want to do. I want to do, I want to go skiing. I want to go sledding, like other things like that. I also put it in the jar and I just kind of pick one whenever I know I'm going to have put the time to take myself out on a date or do an activity. But I vowed to myself that I was going to do this once a week because I needed to start creating those experiences again right now that I'm single. And then, yes, I'm so focused on my business. I'm so focused on the podcast. I'm so focused. I Like I said, I have a job too. But it's like, okay, I also need to take time out of my day besides the gym, besides doing my inner work to do something fun for myself. So like, that's kind of like how I do date, date yourself. I cook for myself. I either do want to go to the movie, do you want to go to a concert on my own? Do I want to go to a restaurant and have dinner? 
or maybe it's something for my inner child maybe it's something that i have to journal or i have to read a book it depends on also your mood but create experiences so you can start dating yourself and do those things to also heal you and your inner child what does your inner child need right now is there something you wish you would have received or done as a child start doing those things to soothe and meet your inner child unmet needs and this is another thing how you fulfill your unmet needs as an adult so you don't date when you're back dating or consider dating you don't come from a place of lack and scarcity and neediness but come from a place of feeling so whole and complete on your own because you have done that for yourself and what things can you do to fulfill your needs as an adult too that's very important and that's another way you can start dating yourself and creating those experiences and like I said this is this podcast episode is not to talk about dating in the future but if dating ever comes in the future you will have this beautiful connection with yourself and you will also learn to date yourself while you are in that relationship because a lot of times if you are more in the anxious attachment or when you're in a relationship you sort of like stop doing things for yourself self-care things like that because you are just so happy enjoying the time you also got to craft time within that relationship for you for me time for your independence for your freedom um so i hope that helped now i want to talk about confidence because a lot of women who are choosing to be single don't feel really confident and i say that because this comes more from societal expectations that they attach our worth and value to being in a relationship or married or having kids so a lot of women don't feel confident when they say they're single so I want you to own that this is a confidence boost when you are actively choosing to be single and obviously confidence is going to be key in navigating single being single right now and I want to dive into some practical tips and you can start doing in mindset shifts that can help you exude confidence in this phase of your life being confident in your independence is just not it's not just liberating but it's kind of like a feminist act and I don't feel we are born confident a confidence is a skill that we acquire and something you can develop and strengthen over time. So this is not something you are born with. This is not something that is actually even taught in school. Like I wish this would have been taught in school for me, but it's not. It's a skill that you acquire. Confidence is a compounded, it's compounded courage and bravery to do something again and again until you feel confident in that skill. Confidence is the embodiment of repetitive courage. So the more courage you have to do something that you are afraid of or or something you've never done before, the more you do it, the more you do it, the more courage you have to do it again and again and again, that's going to compound and it's going to build up and make you feel so confident because you are going to learn a new skill. You're going to learn something that you didn't know before and that even gonna, that's even going to make you so proud. So what things are out of your comfort zone that you can do or things that you are afraid of um, what things can you face that you are afraid of doing things alone for example um, right now that you're single I know a lot of women struggle with dining alone or being seen alone eating out alone I, I think it's a lot of women are embarrassed they get a lot of anxiety because people are looking at you but it is an act of empowerment just imagine how powerful it is to be there so confident and so bold and so unapologetic eating alone enjoying your meal smiling just doing something for you it feels so confident like I remember when I started taking myself out on dinner dates or just going to a bar and have a glass of wine I don't really drink that much anymore but when I started doing that, like I never really felt awkward. I never really felt like out of place. I think it's because I have been alone a lot, even though when I was in relationships, um, that I kind of just like, I'm okay being with my own company. And I never even care if people were staring at me. I was just there enjoying my time. But I am not comfortable. Um <laughs> 
taking videos of me when I'm doing that. that. That's something that I'm not very confident on. And that's something that's also another reason why I don't really do day in the life of um, blogs or, or TikToks or anything like that. Just because like I don't want to be seen videotaping myself. I used to do that when I would do workouts at the gym and everything. And I just don't never really felt comfortable with it. And I don't want to be seen like videotaping me and videotaping myself or taking a video of myself. Um, if it's like a very busy restaurant, I don't know. There is something that I'm just not comfortable with. So maybe this is something that I'm actually going to have to explore just for me, for my own sense of confidence, but not for me to post videos or do day in the life of, because I don't know, they're, they're just not a buy for me because I also like, there's this other aspect that I'm like, I don't want to be worrying about the angle of the camera or if did I do it right and having to go back and look at it. Oh no, let's, they, let's do another take that it takes away from me being fully present at that moment. That's the main reason why I don't do it because I just want to enjoy myself, maybe take a picture of my plate but just me kind of like literally videotaping myself, like, I don't know, I it's not it's not it's not my thing. It's not my thing. But it's also like, hmm, I'm also uncomfortable doing it in public. So maybe it could be something that I could explore, maybe. But um, doing things for you. So wh- going back to the main question, what things can you do to face your fears and step out of your comfort zone? Doing things alone, dining alone, go- sitting at a bar alone without the intention of meeting anyone just doing it for yourself because a lot of times women go to bars hoping to meet a man hoping to meet no you're gonna go and do it for yourself because it makes you happy you are gonna go and do things that also are gonna make you so happy and joyful is it a concert that's something that I do want to do I would do want to go to a concert on my own I just, I don't know, the parking situation freaks me out. I, I don't like, like traffic to the city. I don't like it either. But this is something that is out of my comfort zone, like traffic and feeling like claustrophobic, not being able to get out of the parking lot fast and feeling trapped. It's something that it gives me a lot of anxiety. Um. So yeah, there we go. That's something that I also need to work on, like I said. And are you something that makes you face your fears? This is something you want to start working out. You want to start going to the gym. You want to start lifting weights. You want to start taking care of your health. Um, start a new hobby that you obviously don't have any skills in. Um, like I want to start pottery. Like that's something that I would love to do. What things can you do to have the courage to do that you are afraid of? So like what can build courage within you? Like I said, from right now, like I'm still like something that I'm still not 100% confident on is my not my body. I love my body. But being seen and being sexualized and objectified, I do have a job and my job requires me to take some stuff, sometimes paperwork to the warehouse. And you if you have ever worked at a warehouse, you know how it is this is but with me, what happened in my previous job being sexually harassed, I am paranoid and I do wear very baggy cardigans and sort of clothing to hide my body and my figure because I don't want to be objectified. I don't want to be sexualized. I'm also kind of like this resting bitch face at work. I don't want to smile. I don't want to talk to men. I am very, very cautious now. Like, you know, I, I'm just kind of like respectful, but a lot of times I just don't look. I just go straight, drop the paperwork to whomever needs the paperwork, and I go back to my to my desk but it's something that I, I lost my confidence. I lost my confidence in feeling in feeling okay, being seen just because of what happened. I don't ever want to be objectified again. I don't. And I know it's, it's so hard with the patriarchy and how men are. And sometimes it's inevitable, but it's just something that I'm working on and I'm healing right now because that really, I didn't realize the effects of being sexually harassed by a married man and someone who... I thought he was my friend. And now it's like I avoid men and I avoid talking to men because I don't want men to think the wrong way. And if you smile at a man, they might he might take it the wrong way when you are just nice and friendly and 
is, you know, so it re it did change me. It did make me feel less confident at the workplace. And I realized that when I enter the warehouse, I get a lot of anxiety. I feel uneasy. I don't like it. I, I panic and it's something that I'm working on. So like, I did see that, that I'm like, oh my gosh, even the way that I dress at work, I don't feel confident. I don't feel beautiful. I try not to feel like that just because of what happened. So that's something that I'm healing, but I just wanted to share because I just want to feel safe again. And I guess feeling safe in your body also helps with confidence. And there was one time that I was, um, I met, I saw a, someone that I that knew me from uh, fitness and nutrition. And um, that's what I used to do before. I used to post a lot of fitness and nutrition. That's how I started healing. And she followed me from there. And then one day we went to, I went to a party and she was there and I'm just, I'm sitting at the same table, like I inevitably, and I hadn't seen this woman in a long time. And she's just like, I said something that I had a lot of anxiety. I have bad anxiety. And she's like, what you have anxiety, but you always seem so confident. And I'm like, that has nothing to do with being confident. You can have anxiety and be very confident woman, but um, it's something that I'm working on guys. So like, um, I'm excited that this phase of my life choosing to be single, it's also, it was also because of that, because I didn't want to be touched by a man. I didn't want to enter into a relationship when I had this in the background and it was really bad earlier this year. Um, and the way that they let me go at that job, that really, really is like, I was the one who made a mistake and it, the way they let me go, is like, as if I was a criminal and it just, it really took a toll on my confidence. It took a toll on a lot of things within my life, but we are back from that. We are bouncing back. And every day it's always like, you're safe, you're safe, you're safe. But um, I just wanted to say something else um, to end this confidence, um, I guess, little chit chat. There's also confidence in not being afraid to do the inner work, to explore your shadow and feel your feelings. There's also confidence in you choosing yourself and walking away from anyone that doesn't deserve you and choosing to heal and be single. There's confidence in staying single in a world that is accustomed to instant gratification, validation, and dopamine hits of dating apps and dating and getting a lot of validation. Like I said, it takes a lot of courage and bravery to be single in a world that shames you for it. So that in itself makes you confident. Um, it takes confidence to say, I'm choosing myself and I'm choosing to stay single while I work on my goals, my dreams, and on myself. It takes confidence to say, I don't date I, I'm not going to date anyone because I don't want to settle. And one day I'll meet the right person for me. In the meantime, I'm not interested. I'm enjoying my time. I'm enjoying myself. I'm enjoying creating a relationship with myself. So make a list of things that you feel confident about yourself right now and read those daily and continue to add things that you are building confidence around that's really going to help you because right now you're like oh I don't feel confident but when you start writing things and you're like okay what makes me really confident what is something that I do that makes me confident what is a trait within me like an in like in a trait within me that makes me feel confident when I look in my body, when I look in myself in the mirror, what makes me feel confident about myself? Because it's not only what you do, but it's also who you are and you're the embodiment of you. And it, this is another thing because a lot of times women are like, oh, I'm like, I don't feel worthy and enough. But when you take a step back and you write a list, okay, what makes you worthy? You realize that there's a long list of so many things that make you feel worthy and enough. So that's another list that you can start creating. But Remember, embracing your single status is an act of self-love and a powerful declaration of your own worth, your value, your independence. It's so empowering to choose to be single in this society today, in this world today. Around the red, red pill podcasting bros, if you are on that side of TikTok sometimes, they are cruel. But it's so amazing to stand up against those men and not have them waver you or shift your perspective and embrace who you fully are. 
let's focus on the importance of rewiring your conditioning programming around being single. Like I said, throughout the episode, I gave you a lot of questions that you can answer, especially on the first part, the inner work, what it means to be single, what are you making it mean, and how does that make you feel? So you can go back to the first section and just do the inner work because we got to focus on rewiring those belief systems and see them as something that is very empowering. And you are choosing. We have a choice. So many of our rights want to be taken away by men who have no say, especially with abortion, the, the, the turn of the abortion laws. Now we are choosing. We It's our bodies. It's our choice. You get to choose what you want for your life. And if you are choosing to be single, the way society is today, the way the patriarchy still wants to control us, you are honestly so empowering to do that. Um, embrace this time of your life. Um, it's something that I am finally doing. I'm finally enjoying saying that I'm single, choosing to be single. Just telling people I'm choosing to be single is so empowering because for so many of us, we have been looking for love. We have been wasting our 20s and our 30s um, trying to find the right person. We ended up in different relationships, marriages that didn't last. We ended up in situation situationships, dating apps, that end situations, relationships. And Finally, embracing that you have no emotional attachment to anyone, that you are over every single ex that you have ever dated, that you don't even care about them anymore. Truly not having anyone in your heart, like no male species in your heart, except my nephew. (laughs) It's so amazing. Like just being at that place. So right now I'm like, you are damn if I am just going to give my time and attention to anyone it's going to take a lot for a man to show up for me and to not prove me but to be the right person that I desire for me because I am not going to settle and it's it's so peaceful in my life right now and I'm just so focused on on my goals on my career and I did a pivot this year again in my career so I'm starting all over again in a way my finances are, are good right now I am excited for what's to come next year. So embracing the opportunity that you have right now, just think of what amazing things are you creating in your life right now that you have the time, the effort to do so. And there's a lot of times that I just want to watch TV and binge watch Netflix or not Netflix, I'm not paying for Netflix anymore, be it HBO Max, sorry, HBO Max or I just want to do something and be a lazy bum like at home. I have, I get to do that. I get to wake up whenever I want, but I want to wake up early. So I wake up early. I go to bed early. I get to decide that for me. Whereas in last, the last person that I was sort of talking to, I was given so much shit for taking a nap. I No, nobody gets to decide that for me. Nobody gets to tell me how I need to run my life, what I need to do with my free time. No one gets to tell me how I spend my time and what I decide to do with my time and where I go, where I don't go. Like I get to decide that. You get to decide that for yourself. So look at the opportunity of being single and how empowering it is and how so many women don't have that choice right now because they are trapped in unhappy marriages and we don't we don't want to piggyback on their unhappiness and misery I'm not saying it because of that but I have been married and it took me forever to leave that situation and not well not forever but it was really hard to convince the other party and I was that person didn't want to give me the divorce. So I feel so, there's a lot of impotence. It's a lot of anger and rage that somebody doesn't want to legally give you your freedom. And you have to go and and file for divorce to get that freedom back because somebody doesn't believe in divorce. And just think of all the women who even way before who didn't have a right to divorce. They didn't have a right, a right to vote, to open an account, a savings account, a checking account, to work. Just think about the how empowering the feminist movement has been too for women that we get to have a choice now. 
And hopefully with the whole abortion laws, everything can be overturned again. So women have the right to choose for their bodies, for themselves and for their health. So I went on a tangent there with the feminist, but <laughs> embrace this time of your life, however it looks like for you, just write a list. What is the opportunity right now? What do I have the opportunity to do with my life? Travel. A lot of women travel. I don't like traveling that much. I don't like airports. I don't like packing. It's a lot of anxiety inducing. Here we go. Out of my, it's not in my comfort zone. It's out of my comfort zone. I don't feel comfortable with traveling. And it's something that I do desire, obviously, but it's not, it's not an it, it's not a need. I am in, I'm focusing my time and effort, but this is something that a lot of women get to embrace. They get to look at different places. They get to take pictures and experiences. So if you are into but solo traveling can be so empowering. And that is something that I will do. I will do that. Not right now, but it's something that it's in the cards for the future for me. Even if I'm in a relationship, I'm still going to solo travel because that's something that it's in my bucket list to do before I die. Um, so embrace this time. Like I said, what is the opportunity for your life and for yourself right now that you have the time freedom? Do you want to go back to school? Do you want to start a business? Do you want to start a new hobby? Do you want to do a podcast? If you want to start a podcast, you can DM me because I, it's been so easy for me. I launched this podcast. I also have one that is coming up again. I'm relaunching it. It's my kind of like first generation Latina, more Latino to Latina topics on that podcast, but it's also going to be like a Spanglish podcast. And I already have a few episodes in line. So I know how to start a podcast. I know how to help women how to start podcasts. But what I really do, I help women heal. And choosing to be single is one of those things. So if you need help with that, send me a DM. Everything's in the show notes. And it's about choosing your own path, free from societal expectations and going against the grain as a woman. Embrace your own company and date yourself. Create amazing experiences for yourself reclaim your independence and freedom on your terms you get to pave your own path the way you want and build your confidence by accessing courage and stepping out of your comfort zone I think I said that also for myself the comfort zone like I never share so many things that I am not comfortable with in previous episodes but this one so this is also for me to probably go back and listen and I've already done all the inner work questions that I asked. This is why I asked those questions because those are things that I had to ask myself and work within myself. But I'm here if you ever need coaching and, and learning to embrace this phase of your life or if you're struggling with anything healing and you desire to really, all, really own with confidence and boldness and be unapologetic and love yourself and and take your power back and turn the focus on you, send me a DM and IG or TikTok or my email. Everything is in the show notes. Thank you for joining me. And if you like this podcast episode, you can please give me a five-star review in um, iTunes or Spotify. I would really, really appreciate it. So anyone can access this podcast and read the reviews and it encourage more women to listen and if somebody needs to share this episode please share it with them but thank you so much for listening to me and spending your time and energy with me and to all the incredible women out there embracing their single status with confidence and feminism i see you i celebrate you and i stand with you until next time i love you <laughs>